Chananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda So continuing our reading from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay, thank you. And I'll just do something here. We're reading from uh, Madhya Lila, chapter 12. And we're going to start verse 21. Dekiba se muka chandra nayana badia, Dariba se pada padma ridaya tulia. Nichananda Prabhu continued, The king also expressed his desire to see the moonlike face of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his eyes' full satisfaction. He would like to raise the lotus feet of the Lord to his heart. <clears throat> Yadyapi sunya prabhura komala hayamana tatapi bahirde kahe nishtura vachana. Hearing all these statements, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind was certainly softened, but externally he wished to speak some harsh words. Oops. Toma sabada icha. E mare e amare lana rajake milaha ihan kata kete gia Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said I can understand that you all desire to take me to Katak to see the king purport Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is naturally the reservoir of all kindness and as soon as he heard the statement made by the king his heart immediately softened Thus the Lord was ready to go see the king even at Katak. He did not even consider allowing the king to come from Katak to Jagannath Puri to see him. It is significant that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so kind that he was ready to go see the king at Katak. Apparently it was never expected that the king wanted to see the Lord at his place, but by way of being externally harsh, the Lord indicated that if all the devotees so desired he would go to Katak to see the king. Okay, so you just heard that, okay? What Prabhupada's saying in the purport. But here's the next thing that comes out of Lord Chaitanya's mouth. This is the next statement, okay, by Lord Chaitanya. He says, Paramartha takula loke karibe nindana loke rahu damadara karibe bartsana. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continued, What to speak of spiritual advancement? All the people will blaspheme me, and what to speak of all the people, Damodar will chastise me. Toma Sabara Agnaya Amina Mila Rajare, Damodar Kahe Yabe Mila Tabe Tanre. I shall not meet the king at the request of all the devotees, but I shall do so if Damodar will give me permission. So I'm going to read the purport to that as well. From the spiritual point of view, a sannyasi is strictly forbidden to see materialistic people, especially a king who is always engaged in counting pounds, shillings, and pence. Indeed, the meeting between a sannyasi and a king is always considered abominable. A sannyasi is always subjected to public criticism, and a small fa fault on his part is taken seriously by the public. People actually expect a sannyasi to preach and not to take part in any social or political matters. If a sannyasi is subject to public criticism, his preaching will not be fruitful. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu specifically wanted to avoid such criticism so that his preaching work would not be hampered. 
It so happened that while the Lord was talking to his disciples at that time, the devotee Damodar Pandit was present. This Damodar Pandit was a very faithful devotee and a staunch lover of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Whenever there was anything that might touch or taint the character of the Lord, Damodar Pandit would immediately point it out, not even considering the exalted position of the Lord. It is sometimes said that fools rush in where angels dare not. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to point out Damodar Pandit's foolishness in coming forward to criticize the Lord. Thus, the Lord indirectly hinted that if Damodar Pandit would give him permission, he would go to see the king. There was deep meaning in this statement, for it is a warning that Damodar should not dare criticize the Lord anymore, for it was not befitting his position as a devotee. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was considered the guide and spiritual master of all the devotees living with him. Damodar Pandit was one of them. And the Lord rendered Damodar Pandit a special favor by warning him to avoid criticizing him any further. A devotee or a disciple should never attempt to criticize the Lord or his representative of the spiritual master. So just a little comment here. So, um, it's, you can't take the behavior of Lord Chaitanya and uh, these great devotees at face value, it's not superficially. No, it's like here in one statement, Lord Chaitanya is saying, um, he won't see the king, you know, even if all the devotees request him. But in the purport, Prabhupada's saying that as soon as he heard these words, his heart immediately softened. <clears throat> so externally, Lord Chaitanya is behaving very, um, not harshly, but sternly, I'm a sannyasi. No way I'm going to see the king. I don't care. Even if all of you request me to see the king, I'm not going to see the king. And then he, in the next breath, he gives that warning to, to Damodar. And only if Damodar gives me permission, which is really, he's being sarcastic. He's, he's also making the point that Damodar better be careful because he better not, he better refrain from his habit of trying to correct me. See? So, so superficially it appears that Lord Chaitanya is being very stern and, you know, he's giving these instructions out. But in the purport, Prabhupada saying that as soon as he heard these words, you know, his heart had softened and he was even willing to go to Katak, which, you know, King Pratipuruja didn't have any intention of having Lord Chaitanya come to him. He was just wanting permission, can I come to see you? And, Lord Chaitanya, and in the purport, Prabhupada saying, Lord Chaitanya, when he heard about Sarva Boma's feelings towards him, he was prepared to, to even go to see him. See, so it's, you can't take these things at face value. Um, just like another example of that is when uh, Lord Nichananda uh, kicked Shiva on the Seine. Everybody knows that story. You know, Shiva on the Seine was making, he was the devotee, made all the arrangements for the devotees when they would go to, uh, to Jagannath Puri every year. So at one point, um, you know, they, they had to, it was some uh, downtime. I can't remember what the reason was, but they were all waiting around and um, Lord Nichananda was, you know, getting hungry. Uh, nobody, everybody was just waiting. You know, they were supposed to maybe, <clears throat> maybe going across the river or something like that. Anyway, when Lord, when uh, Shivananda Sain finally got back, Lord Nichananda was very disturbed and he kicked him in the chest. And, it, you know, so superficially one might think, oh my God, Lord Nichananda kicked Shivananda Sain in the chest. He's really angry and it's just that He's angry and nothing else. And actually, the um, one of the, the son-in-law, I believe, I can't remember the relation, but there was a devotee who was related to Shivananda Sain, and he saw that, and he couldn't, even he couldn't understand what was really going on. Well, his nephew, his nephew was Shrikanta or something like that, and he couldn't understand really what was going on. He, he was so disturbed by that, he left the party, and he went ahead to Jagannath Puri to, you know, to, to see Lord Chaitanya and, complain basically you know anyways but the thing was okay he kicked them but that in anger but that anger was laden with love and those he wasn't really feeling any malice towards Shivan on the same when he did that there's such a deep undercurrent of love between these devotees it's, you know superficially it appeared that he was ang Lord Nichananda was angry with 
Shivananda saying, and I mean, in one sense, yeah, he was angry, but at the same time, it's, it's anger, but it's, there's a lot of love there between them, you know, and uh, Shivananda saying, he didn't get angry that little Chaitanya kicked him in the chest. He took it as a benediction. He took it as a blessing. Actually, even his wife kind of um, was disturbed, and uh, she said, oh, you know, how, how did it go? Lord Nityananda said, he kicked him in the chest and he said, I can't remember, but he said, Lord Nityananda, uh, Shivananda said, wound up saying something like, let our sons die or something. Well, how does it go? Uh, Nityananda cursed his sons to die as well. He said, yeah, let my sons die, but, you know, Lord Nityananda shouldn't be unhappy. So, anyway, so the, these dealings between the devotees like this are very, um, you know, they're very deep. There's a lot of, transcendental emotions and understandings underlying the external behavior of these confidential associates of Lord Chaitanya. And Maharaj Prataparuja is one of them, actually. I mean, just stop and think about his situation. He's the king, okay? He's the king of whatever it was, Orissa. And um, very exalted position. And he wants to see Lord Chaitanya. Now somebody upon here, and, 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 he's, and he's expressing that if he doesn't get to see Lord Chaitanya, he's gonna, he wants to give up his kingdom, give up his life. You know, why? Somebody might, upon here, you know, somebody's not a devotee who doesn't understand anything about these things, might say, upon hearing this, might say, well, what's the, what's the guy's problem? What's the big deal? Why is he getting so, he's already, he's the king, why is he so, dis because he's like, he's, he's experiencing a, a very profound st he's, uh, tr state of transcendental emotion. Yeah. There's a very nice verse uh, that kind of touches upon this. It's, Prabhupada quotes it in the um, teachings of Lord Chaitanya in the first chapter. And uh, I'll just read it here. It kind of gives a, a bit of an insight into what's going on here. And this, this verse was quoted by... Um, I believe Rupa Goswami, at the time when they got, when Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And it goes, okay, it's just from the Govinda Lilamrita. Yogin amatam bhuvanam dayalor ulagayan apyakarot pramatam swadupena sampat Sudaya Bhutehem Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mamum Papaje. Let me surrender unto the lotus feet of Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the most merciful personality of Godhead. He delivers those souls who emerged in ignorance and offers them the highest gift, love of Krishna, and thus makes them mad for Krishna consciousness. See? So I think that's what's happening here. <laughs> A lot of these devotees, you know, they came when they come in contact with Lord Chaitanya they become mad for Krishna consciousness. And, and, and Maharaj Prataparudra is an example of that. He's mad. He's mad for Krishna consciousness. I mean, wh why, is he, why is he so impatient? He, he has to see the Lord to the point where he's going to give up his kingdom and, and give up his life and you know, become a mendicant. And he's, got, he's been st struck. What? There's a verse Vijay quotes it sometimes when he gives a class about just as a young boy desires the association. What's that verse? No, you know it. Yeah, I've heard you quote it in class. Just as a young boy desires the association of a young girl in the same way, let my mind be attracted to. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like these devotees, uh, Maharaj Patruja, he's he's got that. He's feeling that kind of attraction. He, he he's feeling like he's got to have the association of Lord Chaitanya. Otherwise, he just he's feeling really uncomfortable, <laughs> incomplete. Or how are you? What's the correct word? So anyway, um, and that's consistent with um, what we've learned uh, about you know, Krishna consciousness from Lord Chaitanya because Lord Chaitanya 
he only left uh, eight verses in writing. And um, the last few um, express that same sort of a sentiment. When will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand on end at the recitation of your holy name? O oh, Govind, the feeling of separation, I'm considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like rain and I'm feeling all vacant in this world in your absence. I know no one but Krishna is my Lord and he shall always remain so even if he handles me roughly by his embrace and makes me broken hearted by not being present before me, he's completely free to do anything and everything. You are, he's, yeah, he's completely free to do anything and everything. He's always my worshipful Lord. I'm completely, no, it's separation. They're feeling this like, I got to have Christians, I don't have Christians association and I got to have Christians association. And Lord Chaitanya was even, you know, expressing that himself. Vipra Lumba Seva, it's referred to. So, there's an aspect of that here that, you know, this Maharaj Pratapuruja, it's, he's been like, stung by that. He, he, you know, he, He's in this state of consciousness where despite the fact that he's a king, he's already a devotee. I mean, what's, you know, but he has to have that. He's feeling like his, his life is worthless. His life is not, what to speak of not complete. His life is worthless if he can't get the darshan, if he can't somehow get that, some mercy from Lord Chaitanya. It's a really amazing uh, state of consciousness when you stop and think about it. Anyway, reading on. Text 26. Damadar kahe tumi svantantara ishvara kartavya kartavya sabatomara gochara. Damadar pandit immediately, Damadar immediately replied, My Lord, you are the fully independent supreme personality of Godhead. Since everything is known to you, you know what is permissible and what is not permissible. Ami kon shudra jiva tomake vidi diba apani milibe tandre taho de kiba. I am merely an insignificant jiva. So, what power do I have to give direction to you? By your own personal choice, you will meet the king. I shall see it. Raja tomare sneha kare tumi sneha vasa. Tandra snehe karabai tandre tomara parasa parasa. The king is very much attached to you, and you are feeling affection and love toward him. Thus, I can understand that by virtue of the king's affection for you, you will touch him. Actually, there was one more point I wanted to make in this. In this purport, he was making this point about uh, it's talking about how um, Lochitani he wouldn't see him. A sannyasi should not see somebody who's a pound, shilling, and pence person. And the sannyasi is always subjected to public criticism and some fault on his part is taken seriously by the public. So just a point there is that uh, people actually expect a sannyasi to preach and not take part in any social and political matters. If a sannyasi is subject to public criticism, his preaching will not be fruitful. Um, just a point there is that, um, yeah, it's very important, not just for sannyasis, but leaders within the Krishna conscious movement has to be very careful to um, be, as much as possible, try to be beyond criticism, be kind of squeaky clean, because as soon as you're in a position of leadership, sannyasi, GBC, guru, temple president, anybody, you know, um, a certain standard of behavior is expected of you and, uh, and and also a certain automatically a certain amount of respect is offered to persons who are in these positions <clears throat> so if uh, you know if, if the if the personalities in those positions don't keep to those standards it's uh, it's it's kind of form of cheating almost it's disappointing and it's it's not it's not really fair. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of, so it's, it's very important that, uh, I have some notes here. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually kind of the opposite of uh, the service attitude, you know, this, uh, so it's something one should be very on guard against to, to be careful that if you're, if you're in a position where you have like some you're receiving some preferential respect, 
treatment, whatever, that to make sure you have to keep to that standard. Um, otherwise, followers become disillusioned and uh, it causes a problem socially. So I just want to make that point. Okay, getting back to where we're up to. Can I read this one? Yadyapi Ishvara to me, Paramash, Van Svatantra, Tatapi, Swabave, Hoyo, Prema, Paratantra. Although you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead and completely independent, still you are dependent on the love and affection of your devotees. That is your nature. Nichananda Kahe, Aiche Haya Konjana, Ye Tomare Kahe, Kara Raja Darashana. Translation, Nichananda Prabhu then said, Who is there in the three worlds who can ask, ask you to see the king? <clears throat> Kintu Anuragi Lokera Swabhava Ekahaya Istana Paila Nija Prana Se Chadaya. Still, isn't it the nature of an affected man, uh, sorry, isn't it the nature of an attached man to give up his life if he does not attain his desired object? Jajnika Brahmani Sabha Tahaite Pramana Krishna Lagi Prati Age Chadi Leki Prana. For instance, some of the wives of the brahmanas who were performing sacrifices gave up their lives in the presence of their husbands for the sake of Krishna, purport. This refers to the day Lord Krishna and his cowherd boys and flocks of animals were present on the pasturing grounds near Mathura. At that time, the cowherd boys, being a little hungry, requested food, and Lord Krishna asked them to go to the brahmanas who were engaged nearby in performing jagya or sacrifice, and to get some food from the jagya. Being so ordered by the Lord, <clears throat> all the cowherd boys went to the brahmanas and asked them for food. <clears throat> but they were denied. After this, the cowherd boys begged food from the wives of the brahmanas. All these wives were very much devoted to Lord Krishna in spontaneous love. And as soon as they heard the request of the cowherd boys and understood that Krishna wanted some food, they immediately left the place of sacrifice. They were very much chastised for this by their husbands and they were ready to give up their lives. It is the nature of a pure devotee to sacrifice his life for the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So, <clears throat> that's an important sentence there. It is the nature of a pure devotee to sacrifice his life for the transcendental loving service of the Lord. That's what makes it such a pleasure to be a member of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Because in the Krishna Consciousness Movement, there are many devotees who uh, fit that description. They're ready to sacrifice their... They ha not ready to, they've done. They've sacrificed their lives for the transcendental loving service of the Lord. I mean, the situation is kind of... It's, it's similar in many ways to the wives of the Brahmanas because, you know, devotees come come in contact with Krishna consciousness and they hear the philosophy and they understand that, okay, Prabhupada wanted us to, you know, to follow this and he also wanted us to spread this movement. And, um, you know, becoming a member of the Krishna conscious movement, especially back in the late 60s, 70s, was not like a very popular thing. I mean, it was popular in the sense that different people did it, but socially we weren't perceived as being very wonderful personalities for doing that. I mean, devotees underwent, was subjected to a lot of criticism and, uh, but you know, they were willing to do that. Let's see, let's find the exact words. They were chastised. Well, you know, we were, we were, we were criticized. I mean, when we went out in public as devotees, the ridiculed, made fun of, um, people thought we were ridiculous, but just like the husbands were chastising their wives, but devotees weren't concerned. You know, they, they just wanted to. Their concern was to please Prabhupada, and if they had to, if they were going to be, they didn't care what people thought about them. You know, they didn't care what their parents thought about them, what their 
old friends thought about him, what their relatives thought about him, what their former teachers or the general public thought about him. They had this desire to, you know, to please Prabhupada and um, they were willing to tolerate all sorts of, you know, undesirable opinions on the part of the public which make you feel uncomfortable. Nobody does, does, you know, nobody enjoys being in a position where you, feel, you don't feel you're appreciated. So, and they've always had to you know, tolerate a lot, especially in, in preaching, you come across that a lot. But it's like, you know, to, for the devotees, it was something they were willing to undergo because of their love for Prabhupada. And it's just like the wives of the Brahmins had love for Krishna, so they, you know, they weren't concerned about that. They, the nature of a pure devotee is to sacrifice his life for the transcendent loving service of the Lord. So as I said, it's, it's, um, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a blessing, it's an honor, and uh, it's, an, it's a pleasure to be living in the association of, of people who have that consciousness. You know, it, it really makes it, uh, it's, a, it's a very nice experience. It's very different from living in the material world. And you can feel that when you, when you come in contact with the Krishna conscious movement. Um, this, let's see, today's, on Sunday, I attended a, um, initiation ceremony that was performed by Radnath Maharaj in up at Iskand Silicon Valley. So after the whole, after his lecture and after the initiations, they, different people were given the opportunity to speak. So the mother of one girl there spoke and she said um, her daughter got initiated that day and her daughter brought her to Krishna consciousness. You know, her daughter preached to her after she became a devotee and a daughter brought it to the temple in Denver. And she made this statement, she made this comment that actually when I came to the temple in Denver, it was the first time I felt like I was home. And she got such a good feeling coming to the temple from you know, the devotees, from the atmosphere, from the people. I mean, the atmosphere is created by the people that are there. So she, got, she felt so welcome, so you know, loved, so appreciated, and she just like was overwhelmed by that. She's now a devotee herself. Her daughter got initiated and she's a devotee it's just because she felt, was made to feel so good, you know, so comfortable, so loved, so appreciated by the, the devotees there. And uh, so I thought that was significant. And also, that same day, earlier that day, I went on Sankatan. I just kind of went down the street to the uh, a shopping center, down the uh, Walmart, Trader Joe's parking lot. And I, just as, right as I was finishing up, I, the last guy, I, I wasn't, actually I was finished. I was just walking back to the van to drive back to the temple. And I saw this guy sitting in his car with his door open and he had a little mirror and he was looking at himself in the mirror. And he had a shaved head, you know? So I just thought, you know, just to be friendly, I just, you know, it was Sankatan. So I just called all, all over to him. He was about as far away from me as I am from Neil, um, from Mount of Mahotsva. I said, hey, hey, you, I said, hey, don't worry. You still look good, man. You still look good. And, you know, he didn't know if I was kind of trying to make fun of him or what. He kind of first looked up like that. And I, I, know, I said something else. He kind of relaxed. Anyway, I, I, came, I went over to him and I started talking with him. And it worked out. He was, he was interested. You know, he was interested. In, I could see he was interested in spiritual life. He was a seeker. So I gave him the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. No, sorry. First, I gave him the science of self-realization. I showed him where to, you know, the part where you could learn how to chant. And I, then I could see he was, this guy is really interested. So I gave him another book. And I told him, uh, and I asked him for a donation. He said, well, I, I can't. Anyway, to get to the point, I invited him to the temple. And he came. And he came to the temple. <clears throat> he showed up. He, he, was, he sat through. He was there for the entire lecture Radhanath Maharaj gave. At the end, he, he met Vaisheshika and uh, he, you know, he really like was super impressed and they, 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 they were talking to each other like they, were, like they knew each other for years. Somebody, I think Ananda Kirtan made that comment to me because he observed when he met Vaisheshika. And he said to me after, he said, you said, yeah, he said, I can't remember when I've been in a place with so many people and I felt so comfortable. Same thing. It's unsolicited, you know, just like just a guy off the street and he's coming and he's there in the association of devotees and he just, he just felt the good energy. I think I should practically those are the words he used. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. We're very fortunate to be members of the Krishna consciousness movement. If for no other reason, just because we 
have the association of other members of the Krishna conscious movement, other people who are dedicating their lives to trying to follow Prabhupada. You know, it's very, it's actually, we, we could take it for granted, but people outside appreciate it. And as I said, there's that mother and this guy just coming right off the street. They, they, they could understand, they felt something special was, you know, we had something special happening in, our, in the association of the devotees. So I just want to put that out there. Eka yukti ache yari kara avadana tumina mili leha tandre rahe tandra prana. Nichananda Prabhu then submitted one suggestion for the Lord's consideration. There is a way, he suggested, by which you need not meet the king but which would enable the king to continue living. Eka bahir vasa yadi deha kripakadi taha prana prana raki tomara asadari If you, out of your mercy, send one of your outer, outward garments to the king, the king would live, hoping to see you sometime in the future. Purport. Sri Nichananda Prabhu was thus very tactfully suggesting that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu give a piece of his old clothing to the king. Even though the king was not fit to meet the Lord, the king would then be pacified by receiving such, clo a, such a cloth. The king was very much anxious to see the Lord, yet it was not possible for the Lord to see him. Just to resolve the situation, Nichananda Prabhu suggested that the Lord send an old piece of clothing. Thus the king would understand the Lord was showing mercy to him. The king would then not do anything drastic like giving up his life or becoming a mendicant. So I'll uh, stop there, actually, it's 10 past. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? Yeah. You want to wait for a mic or what? Wait, wait, he's going to give you a microphone. We've got, we got people on the internet listening, so. Hang on. Start from the scratch. Yeah, take it from the top and do the mic. In the purport, the brahmanas' wives were uh -huh. willing to sacrifice their lives. And you're mentioning how you feel so grateful for being in this movement, feeling at home. We can, maybe um, I can ask you, I can give two examples of devotees in our movement who gave up their lives. I personally saw Jayananda in New York and uh, practically he gave up, he was coming out of a hospital just a few days before the Ratiyatra started and he was in great pain the whole time he was walking and carrying Lord Jagannath down Fifth Avenue and he practically gave up his life the way he served and then there's devotees in Russia who we know were persecuted and died in psychiatric wards. Yeah, I mean, those are extreme examples. Those are great examples. But, you know, to different degrees, practically all the members of the Krishna conscious movement, they're not, they're not letting, literally giving up their life in the sense of, like, dying, but sacrificing a lot to do this. I mean, a, a lot of the devotees who are in the movement, if they weren't trying to be such serious devotees, they could be outside, they could have nice homes and cars and this and that. But they're, you know, foregoing all that to just live here and dedicate their time and their energy and their resources to trying to practice Krishna consciousness and most importantly, spread the Krishna consciousness movement. So that's something that, you know, we should kind of try to be mindful of and appreciate that devotees are making sacrifices. They could be doing other things with their lives, but they're trying to do this and that's very glorious. That's the point I was kind of trying to make. Yeah. Mother Kriya Shakti. And that's the point. That's a, it's, it's, it's appreciated. It's not going unappreciated. Even like a guy off the street, a mother of, of a devotee, they, you know, they, you know sometimes you get so close to something you don't see it. But other people, they, they're appreciating it. They see it and they appreciate it. Yeah. I'd like to just tell a short pastime of Srila Prabhupada in one of the Rathiyatras that he attended. And this was in 19... 76. Um, it was the bicentennial, bicentennial year in uh, Philadelphia, and the devotees knew for a year before that he was going to come for that Rathiyatra. So they started collecting um, 
materials for the cart um, a year before and they started just working with whatever they had and the cart ended up being like 50 feet long. <laughs> it's really long. And then they tried to figure out what kind of wheels to, they could do for this and they ended up getting eight foot electrical spools. I mean, that's three foot, three feet taller than I am. That's eight feet tall and they, three of them together. And then they got a bandsaw and they cut out scalloped wheels for this cart. And Shula, when Srila Prabhupada saw the cart, he spent like 15 or 20 minutes looking at the wheels and he said that the, whoever designed these, they were inspired by the architects, the heavenly architect, um, Vishvakarma. Vishvakarma. And so Srila Prabhupada, the, the route of the, of the Rathi Yatra was supposed to go towards Independence Hall and then make a turn at the art museum with a rotary, a roundabout. And there was a fu separate function that was happening at the art museum and the cart proceeded to the route and made the turn and the roundabout and everyone was in bleachers at the art museum and when they saw the cart they thought this was part of the event and they all cheered and everything and probably made them go around again so they went around once and then they went twice you know and they went on their way so everyone got mercy from Srila Prabhupada he was on the cart he rode on the cart that year and it was raining the the whole time that up to the point where the parade was supposed to take off, it was raining. And when Srila Prabhupada um, went up to the cart and sat on the Vyasa sign, the sun came out and it was a sunny event. And when they were first getting, when they had first taken the cart down to the street to start the parade, um, the lieutenant uh, chief of police, who was the inspector for the parade, he said, No way. He said, there's no way that this cart is going to go down the street. It's too big. It's like just enormous. And so one devotee tried to talk him into it, another devotee, another devotee. It took like five devotees, five separate devotees to finally talk him into it. He said, okay. And, he, and they got the permit at the like zero hour to go down to the, um, to the, to the event, and when they arrived at the park and had the uh, had the festival afterwards, um, and Srila Prabhupada was giving lecture, it was popular at that time for um, streakers, people to you know run naked across an event, oh, okay. you know, remember? And um, there was a streaker at the at the event, and he <laughs> ran across the field, and Prabhupada um, integrated that into his lecture. <laughs> Thank you. That was nectar. Anybody else like to say anything? Okay, thank you very much. Gantaraj Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai. Haribo.